There's also something called the Ames test for identifying chemical carcinogens. And basically the Ames test exposes mutant bacteria. So those are bacteria that are already mutated. And it exposes them to a mutagenic substance to see the rate of re reversal of that mutation. So um, here's an image, the um, diagram that shows that. So basically, uh, you're taking mutant bacteria and then you're exposing them to another mutagen to see how many um, bacteria will revert to um, a natural state or some other state. Um, so basically here you have a control and, um, and no suspected mutagen is added and basically you're having on this control plate two colonies that are growing. Now here you're adding a suspected mutagen and in this Ames test it shows that apparently this uh, mutagen was able to reverse the mutation in a bunch of um, bacteria and they grow here as colonies on this experimental plate. And you see, you can see that there's a big difference between the control plate and the experimental plate. So, whatever mutagen was added here did actually do a good job in reversing the mutation. And um, it is not just a suspected mutagen at that point, but it's a actually an, an effective mutagen. Now we're moving more into the area of um, biotechnology, and so let's take a look at some terminology that you know need to know for this. Genetic recombination, recombining means that you are taking bits and pieces and you're combining them in new ways. So that's basically what that is. You're exchanging genes, um, you are creating new um, sequences and new um, pieces of DNA that are arranged in a different way. So that's genetic recombination. A crossing over is a way of a genetic transfer, basically, where you are taking two, two chromosomes and you're exchanging equivalent pieces of these chromosomes. So here's an example of the crossing over shown that you have a donor DNA up here and a recipient chromosome DNA right here. And you're exchanging equivalent pieces. And the end result is shown down here where the lighter purple gene here contains a stretch of the uh, more pinkish kind of DNA and the um, pink DNA contains uh, this lavender purple kind of stretch right here. So these pieces were exchanged and that was due to crossing over. Uh, looking at some terminology here again, vertical gene transfer. That means you are transferring genes from an organism to its offspring. So that is between generations, from one generation to the next. Horizontal gene transfer is a transfer of genes between cells of the same generation. That means um, they're not related in terms of, you know, being parent and daughter cells or offspring cells, but they're of the same generation. Transformation bacteria means that genes are transferred from one bacterium to another as naked, what they call naked DNA. So here would be um, the experiment, uh, Griffith experiment, demonstrating genetic transformation. And basically what happened here with um, Griffith experiments was that um, you're taking a rat or a mouse, I think it's a rat, no, a mouse, and um, you're injecting this mouse with some lethal bacteria and the bacteria kill the mouse right here, mouse is dead. Here you are having a mouse and you're injecting the mouse with um, non-encapsulated, non-lethal bacteria of the small kind, but um, they're not encapsulated and so mouse lives. Now you're taking heat killed encapsulated bacteria that previously killed this mouse and so now you are boiling up these bacteria that kill the mouse and you're injecting these heat killed bacteria into the mouse and guess what? The bacteria were actually dead and nothing happened to the mouse. But here comes the thing. If you are taking heat killed bacteria right here, so where only the DNA is still there, 
but the, the cells, the bacteria are dead. So now that genetic information can be shared with the non-pathogenic bacteria of a similar kind. And now what happens is the dead bacteria with the live DNA that's still in there, uh, they share that information with the non-pathogenic bacteria right here. And now you're injecting this mixture and the mouse died because the genetic information actually was shared with non-pathogenic bacteria, making them pathogenic, and now the mouse is dead. This diagram shows a mechanism of genetic transformation in bacteria. You have this recipient cell right here with genes A, B, C, D. And now we're lining a piece here of foreign DNA. So it's called donor DNA here. And then um, using some complementary base pairing, you're aligning the sequences and you're sort of inserting a piece of the foreign DNA or the donor DNA into the host cell genome. And there you can see sort of the darker, darker purple area that's inserted DNA. So now we have recombined the DNA from the original organism and it contains a new stretch of DNA. So it's um, recombinant DNA in this case. Bacteria also have another way of sharing genetic information that is through conju conjugation. That means that genetic information is transferred from one bacteria, one bacterium to another, and um, it's basically the closest you can get to sexual reproduction in bacteria. So I'll be forming sort of a little um, channel, a little con um, a little juncture, a bridge between two bacterial cells, and that can be used to exchange bacterial information, genetic information right here. So we have this um, sex pillars right here uh, that is sort of forming the channel. Uh, between these two cells and now they can exchange genetic information. Um, here basically it's called a mating bridge right here. So in conjugation of bacteria, the donor cells carry the plasmid, the F factor, and they're called F plus cells and the HFR cells, um, they contain the F factor on the chromosome. Basically, um, it's horizontal gene transfer. That means we're exchanging genetic information between bacteria of the same generation. And here would be another diagram of conjugation in E. coli. So we're going to form this mating bridge of sex pillars. And now here, this um, bacterial cell has this F factor right here and it wants to share it with this cell right here. So now we're going to transfer the information over here and now there it is. And now these both of the cells now contain the plasmid and have the genetic information that's on the plasmid. Sometimes the extra chromosomal DNA that's carried on the plasmid stays extra chromosomal. So it will be just a, a ring of plasma DNA that is being carried and replicated in the cell. But sometimes you can incorporate that plasma DNA into the host cell genome. So right here now we have a cell whose genome contains the extra information that was previously carried on a plasmid. Here's another slide showing the conjugation in uh, bacteria. And again, it's um, the principle is that you have some genetic information that the cell wants to share with um, the neighboring cell that it has formed this mating bridge with. And now the genetic information will travel across the bridge and uh, will be shared with the cells. And now we have these um, recipient cells that now contain more or new genetic information. Now moving on to conjugation bacteria. Uh, it can be used to map the location of genes on a chromosome, uh, for example, right here. So we have the map of E. coli, and um, you can see several markers that are placed by right here. And uh, take a look at this. Now, transduction in bacteria. That's a new concept because the DNA is transferred now from a donor cell to a recipient 
uh, cell via a bacterial phage. So you now we are employing the services of a virus, a bacterial phage. Generalized transduction means that random material DNA is packaged inside of a phage and transferred to a recipient cell. In specialized transduction, specific material genes are packaged inside a phage and then transferred to a recipient cell. So here's what this might look like. Transduction by a bacteriophage. So here we have this um, virus landing on the surface of a bacterium. It's injecting its genetic material in pink. And then the genetic material can get easily incorporated into the host cell genome right here. And it will hijack the cells to make more virus particles. And as you can see, more phage DNA is made and the uh, surface proteins are also being made. And now this one will burst out of the cells and infect more other cells. Now let's take a look at plasmids. Uh, plasmids are small, relatively small, circular pieces of DNA on the order of a couple of thousand of nucleotides. And uh, they said to be self-replicating. Um, they are about one to five percent of the size of a bacterial chromosome and often code for proteins that enhance the pathogenicity of a bacterium or help it to survive antibiotics. So um, plasmids, sort of extra chromosomal information, think of it as sort of the flash drive that you're adding to your computer. It contains information, but it's um, sort of a secondary source of information. Well, this diagram shows R factors, um, which are a typical type of plasmid and where they might, they might insert on a bacterial chromosomes. Um, moving on to plasmids. Plasmids are these extra chromosomal pieces of DNA and they contain information, sometimes very valuable information. Um, there are different types of plasmids. Conjugative plasmid that carries genes uh, for sex pili and transfers of the plasmid. Uh, dissimulation plasmids they encode enzymes for the catabolism of unusual compounds. And the resistance factors are factors that encode antibiotic resistance genes. Transposons, by, by definition, are segments of DNA that can move from one region of DNA to, that, to another. And um, they contain insert sequences, ah, yes, the code for transposase that cuts and reseals the DNA. And then complex transposons carry other genes, and you don't really need to know that about this. So here we have transposons and insertions. Uh, this transposable gene here was inserted in this region here, and you can take a look at it. And here we have transposons and insertions. Here we have an example of how a transposable gene might work. Uh, transposable genes, you think of them uh, as jumping genes or movable genes. And so here we have the canamycin resistance gene, and it's now being moved, and it's inserted right here. And so now this circle of DNA carries the information for canamycin resistance. And overall, genes and evolution, uh, mutations and recombination, they create uh, diversity. That's usually a wanted thing. Of course, there's going to be many mistakes and things that are unwanted, but overall, it can move a, a species forward in terms of being able to reproduce and outcompete other species. And um, this diversity is basically the driving force for evolution. Uh, natural selection acts on populations of organisms to ensure the survival of organisms fit for a particular environment. So basically, environmental factors plus mutations, they are the driving force for uh, genetic change.